Hello, and welcome to GTAP. You're watching GTAP, and uh, this is another single player mode. It just seems that Kaz and I decided to alternate when we were really, really sick and couldn't be on the show. Um, so I'm taking over the sticks for this week. Um, and we're going to play a game that I don't know if Kaz has much interest in. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. But um, it's a game that I thoroughly love. Uh, over the holidays, for whatever reason, I decided to buy a PS3. Can't really explain why, but I did. And uh, with it, I bought a whole bunch of games that I missed out on. And one of them is the Zone of the Enders HD Collection. And that's what we see here right now. Uh, let me hit start. Let's actually get into the game because I think it plays that cutscene again. And I don't know if I can skip it. So we'll go to start and we'll start a new game. Um, and I don't care. Uh, because we're basically going to look at this for a week. Now, I'm not going to lie. Uh, if I find my footing and I do really well, there is a small possibility I could beat this in like a very short period of time. The Zone of the Enders is not a long game by any measure. I think it's like maybe, well, okay, so I wouldn't beat it in a week. It's maybe about three to five hours, I want to say. Um, yeah, it's, it's a tiny game. Uh, Zone of the Enders is really cool because if you're a fan of the Metal Gear series, you know the name Hideo Kojima. And Hideo Kojima was the brains behind that series. And he really liked doing interesting and very, I guess, uh, abnormal uh, systems of play. Uh, for instance, he created the stealth genre with Metal Gear in a lot of ways. And this was him kind of writing a love story to um, mecha anime from Japan. Uh, so he partnered primarily with, um, oh, what's his name? Um, oh, I'm going to forget it. Shinaka. I can't remember his first name. Yoji? I think it's Yoji Shinaka. Yoji Shinaka was his mechanical designer on uh, games like uh, Police Nuts, which we never got over here, but he also de designed the Metal Gear. So he designed, like, uh, Metal Gear Rex, for instance. And uh, this game is famous and infamous for some of the most unique um, mecha designs out there. Uh, if we get out of Viola's uh, suit here and take a look, you can see right there prominently uh, the signature feature of the primary suits in these called Orbital Frames, which is a cockpit. And that cockpit is like a jet fighter cockpit right inside the pelvis. So it is a true cockpit. Um, but when you actually think about it mechanically, that actually would be a very sound design. It's just probably something that would never pass a QA test here in the States. Here's our primary protagonist. This is Leo Starbuck. Um, by the way, if I'm spoiling anything or if you don't want to hear all the explanations or all kinds of Mac facts, I apologize. I'm by myself, so I'm going to need to keep myself talking through this. And so this is what we're going to do. Also, the Statue of Limitations kind of up because I think this game's, gosh, what, 15 years old now? Something like that? It was a launch era title for uh, the PS2. This is pretty dark. Wow, this CGI uh, definitely does not hold up as well. But again, I think it's pretty early. Um, I think it's 2001, 2002. I mean, it's pretty early PlayStation stuff. But since we're playing the HD remix, you will see a lot more. Oh, there was a cockpit. Uh, which is weird, because I think that's... I don't think that's... There's two types of mecha suits. Yeah, there's a cockpit. Uh, there's two types of mecha suits in the world of Zone of the Enders. There are the much more powerful um, orbital frames and orbital frames are powered by um, much more strong cores, which underneath them have what's called uh, Metatron, which is a very, very powerful energy source. And then the remainder, most of the rank and file mecha suits are called LEVs, which stands for, uh, I don't remember. I don't remember, something, excursionary vehicles maybe? I'm thinking of Lunar, but that's a real thing, not sci-fi but either way uh, you learn a lot more about that this series um, 
has a surprising amount of entries for how not all that well received it was. Oh, there's an orbital frame. I've taken control of Sector 03 by driving away the flies that scourge our Earth. Still no reaction from Target Bravo. So this is one of the primary protagonists. This is Viola. And that guy on the horn, that's Noman, who is the series' primary antagonist. He shows up in both this and Second Runner. Like I was saying, that's a surprising amount of entries for a series that just didn't do all that well. Because um, Zone of the Enders, if you've played it, especially back in the early 2000s, you remember it as, oh, that game that came with the Metal Gear 2 demo. Uh, Metal Gear 2 being as highly anticipated as you can possibly imagine a game being, they released a very short demo that really showed how much depth and I would argue really showed what the PlayStation 2 could do and sold probably a lot of PlayStations in anticipation of it. Um, because you could break bottles, you could watch ice cubes melt, there's a whole bunch of stuff that was just you didn't see in simulations of video games before that. But this is a heck of a nice game. I mean, I think it would have been hard sell by itself because uh, it is really pretty short, um, but it's an amazing mecha game. It got a sequel a couple years later called uh, Zone of the Enders Second Runner, and Second Runner replaced all this CG, which as you can tell has aged poorly, uh, with some really sharp anime cutscenes, because at the time uh, Zone of the Enders was being also developed into uh, two animation projects, one called Idolo, and Idolo was about like the first orbital frame and why all these orbital frames have uh, AI in them to buffer between the pilot and the systems, which you're about to meet this AI right here. This is Ada. Good morning. Ready for combat operation. Who, considering she's just a robot, is a surprisingly deep character. Now you can tell we're playing in HD. This looks much more like a game from nowadays. I mean, some of the textures and stuff are obviously not up to snuff, but this does clean a good five, six years off the age of this game. And the sharp lines, the mechanical engineering, the Haido Kojima and Kojima Productions were always really good about working within the limitations. Like, so you have these very angular creatures, so they allowed you to, um, I don't know, I guess, uh, work within those boundaries by having very angular um, designs to them as well. Yeah! We won! And this is just Metal Gear stuff, the fact I can look around. There's no purpose to it, but it's a nice little touch. Makes me feel I'm the pilot. We will not take the ta time. I feel that I feel like I can probably put it together. So we are not going to do training. But another good thing, this is, I mean, this is sort of the dawn of tutorialization, but um, you didn't need to... Um, read the instruction manual. You could actually do in-game tutorials, and they do this, if I remember in Zoe, like, I don't know if they did in Second Runner as much, but in the original Zone of the Enders, every time you get a new ability, they give you another tutorial module that you can go through. Um, we're going to skip that, though, and hope that I can remember stuff. Uh, oh, and just to finish that thought, so Idolo, which is about the first orbital frame, and then there was a... Uh, a standard two-season anime called Idol or called Dolores, which connects to Idolo, um, and gives a lot to fill in the world of Zone of the Enders because it's a fairly, fairly complex one. Uh, and then, where you really fall in love with this world, if you like it, is uh, Fist of Mars, which was a Game Boy Advance game that you could. Uh, it's like a turn-based action RPG. Um, what I mean by that is it was turn-based and tactical, kind of like a Final Fantasy Tactics or Disgaea. And then on top of that, when you did battles, they were slightly real-time. Um, like you had to keep like a character inside um, your targeting locks or your hits didn't count. Um, sort of like, I guess, sort of how action infests stuff like 
Super Mario um, RPGs and stuff like that. All right, so um, the grace of this game is how fluid and interesting its controls are. So, uh, especially at the time, it seemed really random, but if you've played games like um, newer Dragon Ball games and stuff like that, you've seen some of this, these tricks come alive. So the face buttons, I have um, triangle, which makes me go up, and I have X that pushes me down. Uh, my uh, primary joystick just skates me all around. Uh, I independently on the other stick can control the reticle. Uh, let's see. I've got lock on. Okay, so lock on is on one of the. Let's see. Uh, okay, so that's the shield. I think lock on is on the other two triggers. The cool ability of holding this in and charging the beach balls of death. You do that one with the trigger, and then you use the normal strike button. So, uh, square will shoot, and if you're in close enough proximity, it'll switch all the gear from long term to uh, <laughs> long term long range to short range. So you'll switch to like the sword he has built into the back of his elbow, um, so you can see that. Uh, and the pilot—I don't know if they mentioned. I think they might have already, but the suit I'm piloting is called Jehuti or Jehuti. I don't, I don't know how you pronounce it. It's 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 a it's an Egyptian word being translated through uh, Japanese culture. So take your own guess what it might mean. But I think even though it's a little weirder, I think Jehudi is what it's actually supposed to be. Uh, these are Raptors. These are Levs. So again, Levs are are controlled by conventional power sources. I think some of them are like you know, uh, there's like some petroleum based based thrusters and chemical based thrusters and. Uh, maybe nuclear power cells. These are raptors, but with specialized armor. These are called uh, mummy heads. Oh man, I just realized, and I, I remember a lot about this game. So they're harder to hit from the front because they got this armor. So it's best to try and like, you know, outflank them, which in Jehudi is pretty easy to do. Or I could do things like the beach ball of death. So let's beach ball of death. Uh, I think they just called it a burst shot. We have shot down the enemy. Yeah. I have detected a Type C orbital frame in front of our position. It is different from the ones we have. I don't remember. I don't remember what Viola's suit's named. But it's pretty powerful stuff, and she's your kind of classic if you watch mecha anime. She's your red rival. She's the um. She's the one that's going to be hounding you the rest of the game. Which, her suit's kind of weird, because I, I, as, as practical as this game is, it definitely evolves some mecha nonsense of, like, why would a robot have uh, breasts? But, you know, it's still a really, really cool-looking suit. And that's Noman pulling the leash. But like I said, there's just something, this and Metal Gear 2, you can see, they didn't age all that um, poorly because, again, they worked within the limitations and a lot of the lines and the angles and the stuff that you see inside the uh, designs are built on the limitation of polygons and draw distances and stuff you could do at the time. Oh yeah, Leo's finding out he's a murderer, so... Murdering's fun. This is night raid. I've also arrived at sector zero five. Should I just wait here? Yeah, that's correct. Viola, report your current status. And again, just like Metal Gear, heavy emphasis on voice acting to tell the story, um, especially for the time. Pretty good voice acting in this, as well as other games. And there she goes. All right, well, I think that's going to wrap up our first episode of checking in with um, Zone of the Enders, also known as the Zone of the Enders Mac Fact Info Dump, considering that's what I mostly did. But uh, in the next one, we'll get into a little more game, a little more mechanics. So, oh, hold on. I'm going to let him finish crying first. Your mental condition has reached a level of minus eight. Which Your is not good. Operation will suffer substantially at this level. I advise you to take some medication to stabilize your condition. That's helpful, right? I repeat, your mental condition is declining. The message is being received from a commercial broadcast. 
I shall patch it through. This is Atlantis. Whoever is aboard Jahuti, can you read? Yeah, Jahuti, Jahuti. Uh, the unidentified uh, person aboard Jahuti. Do you read me? It's a weird word. At least to English. Do you understand what it feels like to murder people? Maybe you like murdering people, but I don't. I also know that you're just a juvenile civilian, and you've done all of this. Yeah, I think Leo's like I didn't have any other thirteen here, so maybe, scared. maybe. I couldn't help it. But again, the, the game's not supposed to be taken super seriously. Like I said, it's a send up of anime that I'm sure Hideo Kojima grew up on, like your things like you know, Gundam Zeta and stuff like that. We are a civilian transportation company, and we've been asked to carry that orbital frame, Jehuti, to Mars. Didn't you see any of our people in the vicinity of Jehuti? Yeah, okay. Alright, we're just going to skip that. Basically, again, Leo's real sad about killing people, but he's going to do a lot more of that before the end of this. And just builds on themes that Hideo Kojima looks at, like, you know, how uh, murder and war are terrible, and they usually cost the people who have the least to do with it. All right, and well, I mean, that's a huge thing of mecha anime too. Uh, so for GTAP, this is Mac, and I'll be back with myself and Jehudi in the next episode. Uh, see you tomorrow. Seriously, I don't know. Is it Jehudi? Jehuti? Judy? Uh, no, I don't know.